What's going on, everybody? Welcome to an episode, first mid-season episode of Burning the Red Shirt. We took week one off. We needed the break. Um, week zero was so exhausting. So here we are, Andrew P. Katz and myself, Chris K. Chatting anything and everything, college football, and maybe something else in between. Uh, Andrew, what's like you're coming into this? I hate this week for a little, a couple different reasons. One, just the overreactions of every little thing. Like, just like this yeah. guy was, I'm right because of this guy. I'm wrong because of this guy. Um, I made that Peyton Thorne post, but I was doing it jokingly about how I, if I was going to celebrate one player, that would be him. But what's your, what's your takeaway from week one? What's, what's your, what are your, where's your head at? So my takeaway from, uh, we can, we can, we can inform the, bring the red shirt marketing department that we've cracked whatever the code for whatever generation, um, my seven year old daughter is a part of. Um, I, she know she knows that I do this, that I, that we do BTR and that, but I've always, I've always positioned it to her as like it being a podcast and like, um, but I mentioned it came up in conversation that we have like a YouTube presence or whatever. She's like, you're on YouTube. So I had to sit through her watching uh, us on like the, on the YouTube version. She's like, wow, you're really good. Um, like, Oh, thank you. Um, so maybe she'll watch this one. Um, hey, so hi, Amelia, uh, if you're watching this, I uh, love you. Um, but so that I think just from maybe maybe uh, from when we're, we're thinking about who to, how to target different people, like YouTube is clearly the the, ch the channel for that generation versus uh, audio. Um, but takeaways, what was the actual question? Because I made that about myself. It, I was thinking more specifically about what happened in week one of college football. Oh, that was a, not week one of maybe uh, True. I mean, college football season. Week week one was extremely good to me uh, across like all the different uh, fronts that I I, I actively partake um, from prop betting season long um, in the driver's seat and like all my leagues pretty much feel really good about uh, almost all of them. I can't crack the code on the industry uh, league that we're in. I just always will come in like the bottom two or three. So that and nothing's changed there. Um, so, but outside of that, I'm feeling good about all my my season long teams. Best ball seems like it's going pretty well on fan tracks. Underdog teams, what like at like six seven p.m. I was like, I am the best in the world at this. By uh, Monday, I'm like, I'm pretty good. Uh, my teams are still all right, but like I don't had not having any Tet McMillan, not having any Castellanos, a bunch of not having too little Baron Morton. You can imagine how the team, my team's kind of uh, didn't uh, play out as well in week one as they were looking earlier in the day. Uh, but still, like I, generally speaking, like year over year, I feel like I have a lot more misses from offseason takes at this point, like a weekend, I, than I actually do now. I'm, I've, I hit on like a lot of my all in positions over one week's worth of data, right? But like, the, my one of my biggest flops, like I, uh, is like Chris Hilton, who just didn't suit up because he's hurt. Fine, but whatever. The the TCU trio is looking great. Um, Brandon Sorsby is looking nice. Uh, Texas, Texas State was scary. Um, like I, dude, I talk about playing with your food. Apparent like that. The idea that they were just gonna like play four quarterbacks, um, against. Lamar would have been nice to know from the outset. Uh, they they played so poorly that they had to like put McLeod and Joey Hobart in in the fourth quarter just to make sure they won the game <laughs> against Lamar. Like I was expecting seventy nothing. Um, I am so like there are so many intriguing games in week two. Like every game I look at, I'm like, wow, that is an awesome matchup. Not maybe not for like the droolers who just like can't want to see no top five matchups and top 10 matchups. And all they look at is the number next to the teams, but like Virginia against wake amazing UTSA and Texas state. Like maybe I'm just so close to it because I follow all the TC, the Texas state accounts, but there's like so much bad blood there. Like that I'm so psyched for that game, but like annoyed that it's at 4 PM. Like that should be like an 8 PM game. Um, the Wazoo Texas Tech game at ten o'clock is like that. I'm so I'm so hyped for that. That's going to be amazing, dude. You have an incredible late night slate. Yeah, that is really your slate. Good. And this this weekend, it's top. I don't think we'll ever have a better late night slate. Yeah, it's the top to top. The, the don't don't you think I didn't notice that uh, eleven 
p.m. kick at, for USC and Utah State. That's prime. It's nice to see you, you USC good against LSU. I mean, not that they would ever lose to Utah State. We have investment in under there, but like it's reassuring. It's nice. I thought we might get a little UT, uh, Utah State loss in week one. It was kind of sketchy yeah. there for a second, but encouraging again that they struggled. Definitely. I speaking of season long, I thought win totals. I thought that uh, Hawaii was looking live against UCLA for most of that game, and but they managed to kind of uh, give that one away. So I think we're still good for over four and a half on, you, on that. You, though. you think throwing to Pafele Ashlock twenty nine times or whatever it was was? You guys have your stats wrong because you're combining zero and one. Uh, it, it's <laughs> only it, only nineteen. Only 19, 19 targets. Got it. Got, yeah. it. got it. Got it. Got it. I was just remembering what Mox had said. So yeah, you're right. Uh, I the crazy thing is that I actually would believe that they would throw it to him 29 times in a game. Yeah, it seemed like you're watching it. Yeah. So I was watching it because of Sturdivant. Unfortunately, I know that was yeah that was one of my more annoying uh, losses. And also that that was uh, that I don't feel great about having a ton of him on underdog after seeing how he was used though. Like he missed what, like twenty minutes of game time with whatever was going on with him. Like he went to the locker room for like more than a quarter, and when he came back, they targeted him a bunch, but the throws were terrible. Yeah, I think the concern there is Garbers just looks garbage. Yeah. Is the yeah, problem he, there? Yeah, um, I, that whole offense doesn't look great. I will say though, I was going to get so pissed off if Sturdivant's injury led to Logan Loya overhitting. Because I had over over on certain under on Loya, and all of a sudden Loya is getting a ton of snaps because of the Sertivon injury, <laughs> and I was like, "You've got to be kidding me! Like this is what a ridiculous turn of events." But it didn't matter. So I had uh, the I had the quad box set up, and it, I had a good amount on Loya unders as well. It didn't even hit me that those things were correlated, and then he was all of a sudden seeing a ton of snaps. Like I was talking to one buddy. But just from the perspective of like I was I saw the box score and Loya was in. I was like, is Loya on the field? And he sent me a tweet of uh someone someone complaining about how bad Garbers was that he couldn't hit hit Loya uh for anything. I was like, good enough for me. Yeah, well the, we might be thinking about this, we need to be thinking about this long term though. Because Loya got snaps, maybe they'll they'll the book will assume that he is like he's like a starter or getting significant playing time. He is not like a top two or three option in that offense. Rico Flores looked pretty good. And that's the yeah. guy that was over him in the depth chart. Yeah. So like, even if they, the whole thought was like, okay, well maybe Loya is banged up and that's why he's right. the backup. But then he played, he played a bunch and Flores looked awesome. So I think that's a week three because they have the week two by, I think that's the week three one to watch out for. Yeah. Are you excited to see ball state play this weekend? Um, Probably not actually watching them on television, but ha I'm very excited the box score scout. And my hope is that like things are things are very narrow from a target perspective. Uh, lots of cozy, lots of Ty Robinson. I don't really, I didn't really get into Braden Sloan uh, stuff, but it feels like an offense where it just might be like four people doing everything, and that, it would be exciting to see that play out in practice. Okay, so you had mentioned some other games that you thought were cool, but. Obviously not the Texas Michigan game, which is totally fine. That's not really like a, a fun, sexy game. That's a little bit more. Or I'm not encouraged by that, but by, by what I'm about to see on Saturday. What are the uh, other random games that the non drool like the droolers like myself, need to be paying attention to? Let's come back to this in a second. I have a question for you. Okay. Um, if you're hearing a no noise, of, there's vacuuming going on in my hallway presently. Okay, nice. That's good. Um, so I scooped. Trevion Henderson and Jer Jeremy Bernard and leagues they were dropped. Would you have picked them up if they were dropped in your leagues in a redraft? What leagues were they dropped in? Uh, people really react to week one. It's wild. Like I, 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 I understand and I empathize with the idea that you should not um, like sit too long on things and like it's a nine or 10, 11 week regular season. So you need to, you can't just like hold forever, but it's after one week, like, I don't know why. I don't think you can move that drastically. I don't think you drop them. I think you move them to the bench. That's an insane move. Yeah. I would have picked them up in a, in a heartbeat. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I thought that. I, don't, I, I think Jeremy's fine. I lost a lot. Of, I shouldn't say I lost a lot of money. I lost money on Jeremy. Uh, yeah. That was just unfortunate because, I mean, Jalen Miller threw the ball six times in the first half. 
Like, yeah. How was he going to ever go? Like, how was he ever going to produce when he had just literally six passing attempts in the first half? Um, so good call, good call by you on Kobe. Did you see the our, Do you have props for that game yet? For Bama, uh, a little bit. Yeah. Did you see what Kobe's lined up this week? I did not. Let's see. I only have touchdowns for most of Bama. Yeah. That's annoying. Yeah, it'll be updated at some point. True. What's the line on Kobe Prentiss? Currently on FanDuel, 68 and a half yards. How? Uh, dude, all three of his catches, you are spot on that he I don't that he wasn't gonna start. He didn't start, right? He was backup. Then, he only got the catches from he was second Simpson. string, and then he got them from Ty Simpson, and he almost hit the over. Yeah. Because they were th- I was like, I was like, oh nice, Prentice won. And then I'm like, wait a second, they like are still throwing, which I don't blame them in the third quarter. You're not just yeah. gonna, you know, you have to run you want to see what Ty Simpson's got a little bit, you know, in case something happens. Yeah. Like so I don't blame them, against, but damn. They're going up against what was the worst pass defense in the country last year. So fine. Like Milrose total yardage is two eighty, roughly. And I get the idea of setting receivers at higher numbers, but it's just wrong, right? The idea that Prentice should be the highest, like it, the only two receivers that are aligned are Prentice at 68 and a half and Law at 51 and a half. Like that doesn't feel at all like, sure, they could break something, right? Like there's going to be, Pat Bama's going to throw for a long, uh, they're probably going to have some long touchdowns and like it could, it could be heartbreaking if, if it happens, but like that's like it's not accurate. Yeah, I like both of those unders because laws more used as like a little bit of like a kind of a runner, and then like I don't see him as like a true receiver. And then Prentice is legitimately at best the fourth receiver option. Yeah, like Jeremy Ryan Williams and Law are all ahead of him in my opinion, yeah. and maybe somebody else. So I'm not. I'm not. I'm not uh, worried about Jeremy. Travion's interesting. I would never drop him. But like they, I just, they didn't look like they just were gelling at all, the Ohio State. No, it, just, it, looked awful. it seemed like they were trying to figure things out and what would work, what wouldn't. And it looked like last year. They got plenty of time to figure it out, though. They don't play anybody for like another month. I am excited about Pitt Cincinnati. It's a good game. It's going to be, yeah, that like. How pissed off is Nardi going to be when that when both teams are in the, scoring in the 40s in that game? He can't possibly like the fact that they were like a top 10 plays. Yeah. Or top 10 plays it. last week. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing the ball 40 <laughs> times. Yeah. That was shame to me. A whole team was supposed to be a runner, and then he just ended up running it like three or four times. Is that is that his background? I saw someone else make mention to something like that. I, yeah, I don't know anything his, about him really. That's kind of his background. Uh, some of the C2C guys said that he should move the tight end. Interesting. Did he look okay throwing the ball? I didn't watch the game. Okay. You know, it's one of the ones I had the quad box going, but it was not, you know, you don't get to pick the, the options. Uh, I wanted Virginia Tech, obviously, RIP, and I wanted uh, the Georgia game. And the only ones that had those two had, <laughs> I was watching Iowa, Illinois State. And somebody else, um, so I couldn't get the pit game in there. Um, you excited to see Sluka drop a fifty burger on Deacon? You Hill? think he will? Yeah. Deacon, wait, wait, did you say Deacon Hill? Yeah, he's the Utah Tech QB. You mean Dixie State? What do you mean? Do I have them confused? No, they're the same thing, but they renamed shockingly. They oh, the score still has uh, it has Utah Tech. Yeah, it, they are Utah Tech. You don't go to Dixie State in 2024. You, I, I'm you change from Dixie State in 2024. I'm dead name it. Yeah. Uh, I didn't realize he was there. That's incredible. Uh, I I mean, you, I think you, we are playing him in the 50-teamer because we – well, we have Mikey Keene. We honestly should I – mean, we're not going to do it. But there's a level of we should consider Mikey Keene because I think we're playing – Oh, you know what? We're only playing one Fresno State receiver in one league. League, I'm playing Fresno State receivers, but yeah. Um, but yeah, M- Mikey Keene's matchup is great. But yeah, Sluka. I mean, they didn't really. He looked great against Houston. Was that more a matter of like they just didn't read to didn't need to like sacrifice his body more, and that's why he didn't put up like a huge fancy effort. They uh, they took the air out of the ball in the second half. They only threw it three times. Like 
I figured something like I watched, that. I watched some of the early drives and was very much encouraged with what I saw. Like, I expected... I, did you ever watch him at uh, Holy Cross? Not really, no. I think I watched, like, a random playoff game once or twice. Every play was the exact same, so... It's like the dive, no. right? The blast or whatever? Yeah, yeah. so it's... Look to see if the their receiver, who I think now, like, is in the NFL or NFL Jason. Look to see if he's open. Otherwise, Luca runs into the line and sees if he can get some yards. Um, but they've got him actually like playing real football, trying to make reads do, and obviously leaning into his ability to just do cool shit and stuff. Uh, it's going to be so much fun. His playoff schedule is incredible, too. I will say, I don't think you can come away and be like, oh, fantasy star for anybody really after one game because there's just so much in play. But I will say, watching Sluka was definitely like, oh, he can play football. Like, he looks yeah. awesome. Like, there were yeah. zip on passes. He ran the ball super well. Like, I don't know if that's going to turn into, like, insane amount of fantasy points or, like, where everybody projected him to potentially be. But, like, I was imagining a little bit, bit dumpier and a little bit Grayson McCall shot put throwing a football. <laughs> and it didn't yeah. seem that way, which I was encouraged by. So, and like you said, great matchups or great – scheduling and wheels up for uh matthew sluka hopefully it continues is drones gonna play i think so there's no way the line goes from like 14 and a half to 20 and a half without him playing I, did I you know. did you foresee colin schley playing the first game of the season that's tough no i did not what a wild no, i i was like an early adapter to the Brent prize uh a fraud but then you i gave were, way yeah. i gave i gave way to the to the like i i didn't i should have helped, stole i should have stood my ground no, um, no 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 the only reason why he might be a fraud is if he just is poor at hiring like i think everything is complete 180 from four years ago for virginia tech but their their coordinator hiring like he doesn't call plays for offense and the offense looked horrible because we didn't called the right plays and then we did and we threw for like almost 10 yards per attempt and you know made the comeback the defense why were we like some of it was tackling some of it felt like what did you expect Diego Pavea to do you know like what did you expect that that offense to look like part of it was bad luck you know there were four fumbles and we didn't pick up one of them like that's just a, in a little bad luck but I'm in on pry still I'd Isn't like this- I'd like to see assessments but I'm in on pry but now, I, I don't know. Like, this is at least two years in a row where they've started off the season looking like trash. Um, ability to prepare for the beginning of the season has to fall on a head coach, right? Even if he's not calling plays and stuff like that. Like, I think that that is very much, like, head coach-centric. Like, Jay Norvell is the same way. Um, like, every we're all kind of realizing he's a clown, so it's like, I'm not trying to say that they're quite on the same tier, but Look at Colorado State's um, results the, the first three years over the early portion of the season. Like they have FCS losses on their resume um, and stuff. And like obviously against Texas this past week, like that was like, yeah, obviously they were going to lose, but that was an unmitigated disaster. Um, I mean, prize mistake last year was starting Grant Wells, obviously. <laughs> That's, and that is on him. That decision's on him. I don't know why you would make that decision once you've seen Kyron drones, but who knows? Right. I don't know how much there's obviously a level of like it falls on him, but what has changed? If Virginia tech wins 10 of their other next 11, they're in the playoff. Sure. Like it's, it would, it would be nice to lose to Vanderbilt. It's not <laughs> encouraging to lose to Vanderbilt, but like it's not the end of the world. Do you watch uh, any of, uh on the old espn do you have espn plus yeah all right good it's so essential for us uh did you watch any south alabama north texas i did not i wish i would have after looking at how geo performed and chandler morris yeah i i watched not as much as i would like the the problem with espn plus is as someone who likes to flip around it's like it's like impossible right because you're like you can flip around within the ESPN plus app fairly easily, but the, like if I want to, if 
flip back and forth between a game there and what's on YouTube TV. This like we're talking about a minute and change of now watching games, which is not acceptable in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so I I watched like every it felt like every drive like Geo and uh, Chandler were just doing cool shit. It was amazing. Like Geo has some unbelievable plays in that game. Um, it was nice to see two guys that we love actually putting it uh, putting it together on the field and absolutely balling out. Did you see what Air Force did this weekend? This past weekend, uh, they stood a running back that wasn't even on the roster. So I've heard people say this this phrase before, and it, I don't understand what it means. The idea that service academies have unlimited rosters. Like, I think you know they the, just left a player off the roster. It's like if you played for Air Force, you practiced for Air Force, but you just weren't listed on the roster page. But what there's something about service academies that they can do that, and it's okay. But other teams can't do that, and I don't understand what it is. Really? I just yeah, like I don't that, who so handles that. It, that you, it feels like it's an IT team thing. Like you can't penalize a coach for an IT team not putting a player on, can you? People use this phrase all the time. They talk about how service academies have unlimited roster sizes, and I assume that relates something to what we saw here. How a running back not on the roster, like was getting twenty carries or whatever. But I don't, it's something unique about them. I, I just don't know what it is. Yeah, it's uh yeah. So the tweet says uh Owen Allen, not even on the ma- main roster, takes a carry in the first half in a one score <laughs> game. What is, it, what, what is the main roster? Is know. there a secondary roster? Yeah. The scout team perhaps. Or, but you would think that would be main roster as well. That's interesting. Um and then our guy my guy, Dylan Carson, got hurt. Mm. Pretty much talk him up to RIP. I mean, there's nothing worse than an Air Force player getting hurt because you have literally no no idea when you can play him again. Do you watch any of Oregon, Idaho? Uh, barely. I had that quad box for a while. I did. It it was uh I don't quad box well. I feel like I feel like I Michigan was playing at the same time, so I had a lot of Michigan and then I had the volume on the Notre Dame game for my wife. So I did. It was kind of a. It's hard to focus on a third game. Yeah. Just super weird seeing it play out. Like the Oregon runs a zillion plays. They all are for positive yards. They never score. I how did they not? Really... So how did they not score? I was looking at that this morning. Like, was it a bunch of turnovers or just a I, bunch of turnover on downs? Or I think that one. I think the latter. It's just weird. I don't know. Do you think Boise's got a shot at beating them this weekend? Probably not. Like, they just gave up 50 to the J.C. French show. In hindsight, maybe we should have been a little, we, uh, all of us, me, should have been a little higher on the J.C. French just from, like, the idea of, like, all right, if he can just throw a forward pass, like, this dude has insane upside. Does he, though? He can't. He's, like... He's a tank. They're going to run him a lot. Yeah, that's true. And he, he threw for 300. Yeah. yeah. Like he's going to get, he's going to get 70 touches some games. Yeah. That'll be tough to, uh, to not like, like, <laughs> <laughs> where is he? I'm trying to look and see where he's from down the street from me a little bit. Interesting. Um, But it, I mean, it's alarming to have to like really try hard to beat out the people that he beat out. Right. So, uh, was there another game that you were thinking about for the drillers to help us out? Mississippi state, Arizona state. will be fun. Yeah. I'm not sure what to think about Arizona state. That Wyoming game was weird. And Did you watch? Not, uh, a little bit. And then it shut it down. I watched the, uh, I watched too much. I was like feeling, I was, com- I was like, I, I was at the point in the night where like I can't drink anymore. Like I'm just trying to keep my eyes open, um, type deal. But uh, it's tough to separate Arizona State doing whatever they want and how terrible Wyoming looked. Like Wyoming didn't even give the customary Wyoming defensive effort. I think you could question if that how much of that is attributable to them being back on the field every three plays. Like their offense was three and out basically every single time. Um, 
but I mean they they executed. They looked good. Um, I had Sam Levitt under passing yards at like 228 and went to bed when they're up 41 nothing and he's at like 196 and they throw a 70 yard bomb <laughs> up 41 nothing or whatever <laughs> like thanks guys i'm sure they really need to get that one uh, I think so we that, was, that was, that I was think fun we, to wake up to i think we technically liked the over but i i don't think we'd bet it um yeah. yeah they apparently the wyoming coach got a bunch of death threats did you see that no they're like, start the other quarterback or I'll murder your family. Like they were, he said he basically got a bunch of death threats. It's, it's, I'm fairly sure I saw that correctly. Bring back Sean Chambers. Who would have known? Evan Sabota. It was Evan Sabota, right? Yeah. Who would have known that he would have not been good against Arizona State? Josh Allen comes. Josh. You know, who looked, uh, who I liked and looked good for them was uh, for Arizona State. Is that Kyson Brown, the running back? Did he? He had a yeah. big game and uh he they he had a ton of hype in the fall because like Arizona State's beat people were like great. They were always talking talking about yeah. practice. They were awesome. Um and so I heard the name a bunch and he had a big game. I mean, he's obviously behind at least two guys. Did Scatterboat uh, do well? I think he did well just by default. Eleven for forty nine and one and one for seventeen. The thesis yeah. for him is Marcus Arroyo calls plays and Marcus Arroyo always gives his RB1 like 25 touches, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. I think it's encouraging too to see how they just used him nonstop in all the different ways. Last year, the thought is like, well, they love him. They think he's a great player. And he was great before Arizona State, albeit at a, a lower level. Yeah. I, I don't know if I would come away from that game feeling more confident about him though. Some of them are hard because 11 for 49, it's like, well, you know, they had, like you said, it was like such a three and out, three and out, three and out. And I think yeah. there was even a pick six to start the game, maybe. Like, yeah. It, did you really need to push Scat about? If you know you're going to give him 20, give him 25, he's in the Big 12 play. Are you really using him all that much? Especially because I think they like their depth at running back, as I already have mentioned. Yeah. Is. Is uh, Clemson on upset alert this weekend? Again? I was going to ask you that. Uh, I would like to think so. That line's fishy. 16 and a half. 16 and a half. I feel better about my Cade uh, season under props than I did about 30 minutes after I placed them. I was like, well, that was dumb. That was lighting money on fire. Like, there's no way he actually throws for less than 2650. But now there's a glimmer of hope, I would say, after whatever that was uh against daga so you know who the uh, side no no do you know who the back is for east tennessee state that's who app state beat 38 to 10 who the what is who the, the running back is is that where uh trevante ended up citizen no you would be a real sicko if you got this he's this is McGee state i think yeah um this is Devonte houston the yukon running back oh Big game, 126 yards and a touchdown, an 80-yard run. Um, I don't know. I think App State's solid, obviously, right? Real solid teams. You never know, right? These teams, uh, they go at Clemson, and it doesn't matter how kind of poor Clemson is. But App State went to a and last year, and um, yeah, it was great. I have a question for you. In uh, terms of season-long starting benching decisions, have you ever gotten an App State running back correct? Like five years ago, maybe? Like yeah, when it... that sounds about right. I have got I get them wrong like every single time. The only time we've gotten them right as a collective BTR hole is when we took Nate Noel and he transferred to Missouri. Do we still have him? We still have him. Nice. So there's there's that, which is nice. Um, speaking of Nate Noel, those Marcus Carroll unders. Looking oh, those are looking nice. Gotta love those Dallas Hayden or Dallin Hayden ones. Or looking good uh, too. We, we didn't get those on uh, actual sports book. I, I, I was foaming at the mouth for him to make the way, their way over, but they never did. I don't know how he, you know, there's, you have to put up something in these non con games. Like, Technically, yeah. Roman Hemby, I bet over on him at like 650. Technically speaking, he is on pace to hit that number, but he only had like 61 yards. 
but like, like you need more than 61 yards against UConn because you're going to get yeah. like 32 right. yards against Michigan or something, right? Like, well, eventually, uh, Nolan Ray takes your job too. So, yeah. So, you know, I, I was hoping I was watching that game. That was the other, that was the third game of my noon quad box. And uh, I was like, man, I really need Nolan Ray not to do anything so I can. Like, or, you know, after Roman Hemby scored, I was going to say something to you, but I was like, yeah, let me just wait a little bit first <laughs> before I say, I say anything. So, but yeah, I don't know. I like App State against Clemson. I don't know. It seems like yeah. a fishy number, though. Um, what did we come? What did we decide on for the second receiver for UVA? What do you mean? Who's the second receiver? It's not Chris Tyree, right? But he have uh, three drops on three targets. The old pump, dump, and pump. <laughs> the, where is is Trell Harris? Where did he transfer from? Is he Syracuse or Kent State? He's Kent State. Okay. So I don't know. Like it's just gonna be all fields all the time, right? I hope so. We yeah. ended up taking a, enough of them to where I hope that that's the case. Yeah, I don't have enough. I wish I'd. I started to like consider it after we talked about him, um, but I never ended up drafting enough. I feel like there's still a lot of a lot to be determined in terms of what that offense ultimately looks like. Uh, they like they have, I'm sure they have dreams of running the ball effectively still, and they were able to do so against Richmond. And um, there's possibility that that continues this week against Wake. Like Wake gave up 200 yards rushing to an FCS team, so. I like I, I bet some over Calandria passing because he's the man uh, against Wake, uh, but I could see it, them trying to run it a lot just because they saw that like Wake can't defend the run, and you know they you know they want to fucking run the ball, they want to give it to their running backs and just like do that all, shit all day, um, as opposed to actually lean into their strength, which is their quarterback and stud receiver. But I I think that that team's game plan week to week once we get into the meet of the season will likely be reactive relative to like they're not gonna be able to dictate um they probably just won't be quite good enough uh i considered betting them and wake at like 300 to one to win the acc after just seeing how much chaos the acc is in but i uh i held off since these two teams play each other <laughs> This week, I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to just light money on fire that quickly. Yeah, it'd be a quick turnaround to light that money on fire. Yeah, uh, Pace was an interesting name. Josh from Josh from Fancy, I think just the whole group said that he was like a cool late option, and it. I took him a couple times in the uh, underdog best balls just because of it. Oh, nice. Random little sprinkle. I mean, he was free, uh, and he yeah. looked. Great, so maybe that'll continue, kind of like you were mentioning. Um, Ten minutes after the underdog drafts officially closed i believe it was when calandria was announced as a starter and did, did you end up drafting him no i have like only i've won out of 80 teams and like at the beginning of it i was like yeah i'll like i'll sprinkle him in and then it just never happened like and obviously instant regret like that he's he's probably on the league winning roster for, for uh something you think so but he's a pass only guy he's not no, like he's not. What are you he's talking not about? that much of a runner I, I I mean I haven't I haven't watched enough of his stuff to know if they're calling design runs for him, but like box score scouting, the dude ends up with nice rushing totals. It feels like a decent amount of time. Oh. Now. He did 49 yards in the touchdown. That's Richmond. Let's see. I'm not a, I'm not against it would have been nice to know. <laughs> if, if we knew where if we knew he probably goes in that like 11 to 13 round range maybe earlier um, I think I, that might be a little aggressive and i, I don't know i i blame myself for not like i i should have dropped him more of him you have a soft spot for him he slings it man he's fun what's the problem he is fun and i i can and that pains me to say as a tech fan that uh yeah I wish they would have gone musket because he's awful. <laughs> but <laughs> it was win-win for me because musket went the moment. So that's true. Um, Colorado and Nebraska—that's kind of a 
throwback rivalry game this week. We get some rivalry games this weekend. That's one of them. Is there any intrigue on that one? 7.30 p.m. NBC? Um, it was not fun. a fun betting experience having Shador Sanders unders this past week. Uh, and I've, I've stayed away for, for now and do, making this, the same mistake uh, this, this week. I don't know. I think... I'm sure I feel like I'll probably be watching other games. I'm excited to see I was excited to see Rayola and Jamal Banks uh not fall on their faces from Nebraska's side. Uh I I was pretty certain that Banks would do well. It would have been nice to see him do better than Nayor, but like fine. Like he got got targets, got a touchdown, clearly a top two receiver. Rayola showed that like at minimum, he's going to support an effective offense, and there's it feels like there's upside there for the passing game as well. Should be a fun game. Hopefully, uh, I would like to see Nebraska come out on top. That would be cool. I mean, I think everybody, if you don't have any skin in the game, you probably are going against Shador Sanders and Deion Sanders, like just because of yeah. how loud they are. But uh, I would like it to, would like it to be. Comp- I don't really care who wins. Yeah, it doesn't bother me either way. What I do care about from this game is. Dominic Rayola not scampering for more than eight and a half yards on the ground. Oh, I have a 10 and a half. I, believe. I know you do because you talk to Mike before, before you talk to me. So you get the better number and he gets the better. <laughs> number, and then I get left in the wayside. Every time I, every time I send Mike something that's interesting or you use something that's interesting. Yeah. The response immediately is I know I got it at insert three yards better with Mike. Do or, your numbers get never- influenced by, Action on other books. Uh, underdog always mimics what they see, so yeah, they'll take stuff down and put it back out. Yeah, I'm. I have a pretty good understanding of like the flow of information and the actions that come from them, but like a blind spot for me is I don't understand what impacts like underdog and prize picks. Is it just like once a line is initially set? Because a lot, of, a lot of these places they all source their prop lines from the same third party. So you could think of it like it ori- the prop line originates a third party, gets pushed out to Caesars. We like I don't even count DraftKings as a real book anymore because they're garbage with their uh, one-sided action. Caesars, um, we'll say underdog prize fix, they all receive the same line. But then what happens when they those places start receiving action? Um, do they all just adjust individually? Um, based on the action they see, or are they watching what's happening at other books, or does that information flow the action? Um, does it flow back to the third party who then reissues um, lines? My understanding is just based on what I've seen is Caesars adjusts based on action, and the, um, and that will happen to a certain extent. But my guess, my inclination is that the third party will also issue updates that might override what Caesars does from time to time. I don't have any understanding of what happens if prize picks an underdog in terms of what hap- what happens after the original line is issued, um, how they handle their their lines and move their action, move what they move off of. I don't know how, but they either they manually or like manually watch it, like have people that are designed to watch and see what's being bet on. Yeah then adjust based off of that. Um, they, they might have some sort of algorithm that says, says like if some amount of dollars is bet on the over or under that it gets taken off and then someone manually looks at it and adjust it or just leaves That's it true. off. Um, uh, I just was looking at the prop screen at unabated. And uh, what do you think Sam Levitt's pass yard number is this weekend? So I, I, did some stuff, I did some stuff with that game because uh, it's up on, Caesars as well. I saw 188. That feels low, doesn't it? it does um, like yeah. we have it? I don't like. like I don't 240s. have forties. Yeah, over is probably fair. I would say. Is that at Arizona State or is that Mississippi State? Ten thirty. So you tell me. Not Mississippi State. <laughs> Not Mississippi State. Got it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I I took over on Shapin immediately and over on Kevin Coleman. Both those numbers feel good. I like 211 and 37. 
Are we buying the lake effect Friday night, Northwestern Duke? Yeah, not not huge. Uh, I have a little on uh, Mike Wright underpassing. Like it feels like there's prob like there's a bunch of different factors that incrementally make the under the desirable side, right? Nothing like overbearing. I don't know what I haven't looked at like weather or whatever, but like I did look, when I was thinking about that game, I was like, oh, is that at that fucking lake stadium? Because like that would make me like I was already kind of feeling under, but like, okay, maybe there's a little bit of tipping point or whatever there. Um I considered Jordan Moore over, but I was like, eh, like, I don't know. Like that game's just going to be, that game's going to be played in the mud. It's just going to be a rock fight. Yeah. I would be weary of pit, putting any unders over, over on that game. Uh, overs on the game because yeah. it just feels like one that could be super slow. Like just muck it up 45 and 48 plays per team. Like just, I mean, Northwestern won what 13 to six last week. Yeah. Ohio, like, that's not the most encouraging start to the season. It's not how I wanted my Mike Wright experience to begin. Mike, he, he ran for a bunch of yards, right? And he, yeah, but I, I need some, we need touchdowns. We need the D's, man. Remember, that's that's a lot. Game game Vandy? it was incredible. Yeah. Fair. Any excitement? about Tennessee and NC State. They're two ranked matchups or two ranked teams. So I'm thinking probably not from you. I have some prop bets on there, so I, I'll be intrigued. Um, it will be, I think it'll be fun to watch. Hopefully it's a track meet. Uh, rare, kind of rare situation. I have both quarterback overs in that game. Uh, both offenses are fun. So like a lot of, like that, 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 um, where is that like at a racetrack or something? Uh, no, Bank of America Stadium. It's where the Panthers play. Okay. Definitely, like, the the rare game that's geared toward the droolers that will actually be, like, fun and exciting. So, that, that'll make the quad box for sure. Okay. Did you see the second leading target getter for Tennessee last week? Was Brew not first? Chris Brazel was uh, number one. Yeah. Did you watch any of the game? Barely, because we have Simps Samson and um, the 50 teamer. I flipped yeah. to it times, but I turned it off. It's, it's obviously at a certain point. I was like, yeah, I don't know <laughs> this. So, what? Squirrel did nothing, right? Did nothing. His, when he play is healthy, he's unstoppable. Is he not healthy? He's healthy. Uh, so great about it is they gave him a rushing attempt early. You Brew. don't get Brew McCoy. Oh, I thought we were talking about Squirrel. Uh, they gave Brew a rushing attempt. Nice. They were doing the whole load management. Everybody was impressed with them. Load management in the fall, and he's back. He's back. It took five years, but he's back. He has a year. He has another year, right? He has another year. Yeah. <laughs> Poor, poor fans of the show get to keep hearing about Brew McCoy. Did you know, like him and Nico are boys. He's probably sticking around. Who's buying Nico? Nico beer, Brew. <laughs> that's how, that's how you become someone's. You want to become a quarterback's best friend? Buy him, buy him some six packs. Yeah, amen. I don't know what to think about Squirrel. I think it's fine. Um, it's not like Nico didn't throw the deep ball. Like d there were big plays all over the place for Tennessee and squirrel does it. I feel like squirrel does either the short, short attempt or the extremely long attempt. So maybe it just was like, why bother with this right now? Because everything else is working. Um, Have you looked into like routes and pass plays and data for their receivers? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Who was Dante Thornton taking time from, or was it just four four wide receiver sets? It was uh, he played Don, Dante was outside. I think he didn't run that many routes compared to everybody else. Like he okay, had the so he just most, got some targets when he was in he had the six most routes run. But you know it's hard to say when do those routes come because obviously he had early touchdown. So early, at least one early touchdown. Um, yeah. Brazel had 30 routes, Squirrel 23, Brew 22. So those were the highs. And then uh, 
See, Brazel, McCoy, obviously outside almost completely. Caleb Webb was outside completely, so that's a backup. They, the, that was hard because they kept – they kind of threw a little bit throughout the whole game, but, like, sat guys a lot of the game. So it's hard to, hard to say weekly, but I'm not super – like, obviously having Dante Thornton is encouraging. There's no reason to, to like, be negative on him, but, like, I'm not stressing if I'm an owner of one of the top three guys. How would you rank the top three going forward? It'd be hard not to think Brazel won. Really? Yeah, I think so. Interesting. He led the team in targets, led the team easily in routes run. Okay. I would say Brazel, Squirrel, Brew. But yeah. I still have hope for Squirrel. I still have hope that... So that is he- this basically a juiced up version of the Kentucky receivers? Uh, Yeah, prob- probably. They're I mean, probably, they're, they're, probably. Predict, they're all like they're all probably have like they're all gonna be on the field a good amount. They're all gonna have success large and like decent floors week to week, but predicting who number one is in a given week, like good luck. Uh I would argue that Kentucky, like if there's gonna be a guy with a big week, it's always gonna be Barry and Brown, right? I don't know if I agree. He's like he's definitely the most prone to blow ups just based on like what he brings, but I don't know. I feel like maybe a, like if if you tell me Macklin gets eight targets one week or Dan Key gets eight targets another week, like that guy could be the best of the three that week. Fair. What about comparing him to like Oklahoma State? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, they have a clear top three. Both of, I, honestly, Oklahoma State's even better. Like if you look at if you look at their receiver routes and stuff like that, it's like Gavin Freeman ran some routes and like that's about it. Like everybody, every other route and stuff was the top three. Uh, what's interesting with them is it's kind of the same as Tennessee. It's like okay, what's the actual pecking order here? Because Stribling, if you look at his numbers and like all the advanced stuff or whatever you want to call it, like it kind of leads towards Stribling over Owens. No, it's not. Like you sure, hundred percent. So this is this is an Owens week, by the way. Like I'll declared uh, Owens. Yeah, I I bet his overs. Um, I wish they were a little lower, but like it's a great week to bet alt um alt overs on Owens. My thought with Owens is that he's just a. I mean, he's very good at it, but he's a big play guy. No, not a, well. He is, but he's not exclusively. Like last year, there were weeks where he would get. 10, 12, 15 targets. And I think, I think that's coming this week. Okay. That I did preface it with at the beginning that it's kind of interesting to debate who the top. I, three flipped, so I started I, off the yeah. off season drafting Owens, every draft and then flipped the struggling. And I, I regret it. I should just stay on. Owens. Well, I don't think you should have regret it because struggling is still going to get a ton of snaps. He's, he's fine. Like relative, I, like I got him for free and yeah. he's like, he hooked like, Consider like there's gonna be lots of misses in that area where he gets dra- drafted, right? And he's not a miss, so like okay, it's like a, a minimum neutral. But I don't know. I wish I kept drafting Owens. I should say that's fine. I think the cost of dribbling was so low. Yeah, like, I think his floor is higher than you probably think too. Like if you look at yeah. when that third receiver came back, it might have been was it dribbling or was it Leon Johnson? I think last he's, year he's basically Leon Johnson. Yeah, Leon Johnson's target numbers were insane. They're gonna throw it 40 times a game. And if they're only gonna rotate in one one non like one one bench receiver, Gavin Freeman, you know, like that's a great spot to be in. Did you watch any of that game? Barely. I watched um highlights this uh a couple of days ago. They they called they called a Bowman uh like a, it was really nicely disguised. They called a QB draw, draw for him at one point. I was like, I knew he made it out of the game healthy, but I'm like, what? Like, what are you doing? Like, we're the guys made of glass. Yeah, and it's not like they have a quarterback they love behind behind him. No, clearly they're still playing Alan Bowman. Uh, any other games or thoughts as we wrap up? I wish I had. So I, I wish I had gotten real money down on. Baron Morton to lead the Big 12 in passing yards. Like it was through the app, I could, I, my limits were only to win 250. So all I could bet was five bucks. 
but like there's ways to do it right to get more money down i wish i'd pursued it because just like from an occam's razor perspective it's like what if they just run the offense and he doesn't get hurt and after one game it's like fuck that is like now it's like very clear to see um that game like i couldn't be more excited for for that game after did you watch washington state no first drive it was like this is a disaster. Like Zeb is going to be in here in, in five in in about f- five plays because he just looked so nervous. Um, thankfully, Eastern Washington or whoever it was, Portland State, uh, decided that playing defense was optional and allowed him to get kind of comfortable and settled in. And then it was just absolutely wheels up. Speaking of QB draws, like his QB draw forty five yard touchdown run was absolutely like beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, showcase the athleticism, shook a tackle, broke another, and just like really nice play design too. Like it's about exactly what we've come to expect from Ben Arbuckle. Um that like that's gotta be number one on like the games that I'm excited for this weekend. What's number one for you? Number one what? Game you're most excited for this weekend. I would you would think it would be Michigan, but I'm not excited about that. Yeah. Um I don't know if there's one that like jumps out to me as like, ooh, like I am intri- I even like mostly intrigued. I want to see what Alabama does. Like I feel like Alabama South Florida could be a more competitive game than Vegas predicts. I but I really want to see if I'm wrong if we're all wrong on Jeremy or not. Like I, that's what my where my head's at. Lots of intriguing things in the game. That element um it how it, if Kobe Prentice remains in his uh role of just getting hopefully getting a few snaps and not doing much, that would be nice. But last year, so that the Alabama South Florida game, I know we all, we all remember it. Um, like it was played in a downpour, but the USF offense like could not do anything, which is like so ridiculous. Like you think about that offense and just like uh, NASCAR, like going crazy fast and doing cool shit. Like obviously they face the Alabama defense. Like what is what what does it look like this year? Like, are they able to get anything going? Is it just like a? Uh, is it just like we have to look away because they make Byron Brown look like a middle schooler? Um, that it's very intriguing. Yeah, at in Tuscaloosa is interesting. You you hope that they can. They're going to be better than Western Kentucky because I think by default everybody is better than Western Kentucky's performance last week. But I yeah. don't know how much. Um, you think Velcamp? Uh, what what weeks he get the job? I'd have to look specifically at their schedule, but it's coming. Yeah. If West Kentucky plays anybody competitive the next couple of weeks, it's coming. Yeah. So. All righty. Well, uh, hope everybody enjoyed enjoy week uh, week two preview episode. We'll come up with a cool, fun nickname for Zach to title this bad boy. But enjoy the games. Good luck on the props and the teams. And we'll catch you in the next couple of weeks at the very least. Thanks, guys. <laughs>